Good morning. I'm Frank Kaufman. As I mentioned in my last podcast, which was called The Pull, I described setting somewhat absolutes to pursue and be pulled toward by grace. The second one I mentioned that I would do is called The Weave. And so this podcast is called The Weave. What I mean by weave is to talk about two things which have typically uh, been separate and even a source of division, both in religious history and in daily life. And I don't believe they need to be so. I think they can become recognized as having a common point or destiny. That, that would be similar to synopsis, the reason why we're able to see clearly or see a physically unified horizon of uh, vision is because our two eyes, though separate, focus on a single point, and together they contribute both depth and breadth of perception. And so this weave I'm talking about has traditionally functioned with a sense of separation and even caused division, especially in the religious world, but not only there. And I believe that these can be appropriated or or embraced in a synoptic fashion in which both can contribute to a better and more full experience of being an experience of happiness and goodness. So the weave to which I refer has to do with what classically in religious or spiritual, or especially religious, actually, history, is the word and substance. So, for example, if you look at the Christian religion, there's a very famous opening line in the book of John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the, and the word was God. It describes John's understanding of the pre-existence of Jesus, And so Jesus is equated with the Word. Um, At a deeper level, the difference between spoken and unspoken and whether or not something has existence in history or in the real world. So if I meet an individual and think I don't like them, there, nothing has happened in the exterior world or in a certain way in history. If I say I don't like you, I have created history. I've created reality. I've created something that requires the resolution or outcome, or I have caused a disturbance in the potential for a harmonious relationship. Merely thinking it, on the other hand, or feeling it, on the other hand, is something that can be worked on within the self and does and is unencumbered or doesn't have the burden of having the historical reality to fix. So this notion of in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, it's an attempt to expose a something that can only be grasped mystically and that is the transition point between non-existence and existence. Existence in history or existence in the world. So one doesn't think that God did not exist, but creation happened through the word. How do you go from nothing to something? And this notion of transitioning from non-existence, I'm talking about historical existence, incarnated existence, existence which has impact, existence which matters, existence which is causal. And so how do one's how does one move from mere thought into substantial recognizable reality in which everyone can participate, everyone can recognize, everyone can assess? If one says, Where did you get that? Of course he likes that person. Why would you say he doesn't? The answer is because he said he doesn't. It's, it's, mute, it's commonly accessible and accessible. So uh, the weave, uh, and then you go, and so this is what I uh, wanted to introduce in this podcast as that I'm calling the weave. And 
the weave I want to talk about is the weave between word and substance. So now going back all the way into the Christian example that I mentioned earlier. In Christianity, you have a curious reality about the nature of Jesus in which he's understood to be a teacher. In fact, he was called teacher by his followers, his early followers or his immediate disciples. And indeed, if a person is accomplished in anything, say accomplished as a classical guitarist or accomplished as a fencer, someone who fences uh, that particular sport, that person is both substantial as that, they are that great fencer, and also are a teacher, not only just by their existence, but by their word. They can teach others how to attain and accomplish the same mastery that they have through their talents, through their birth and being, and through their uh, investment and hard work. So if you look at the person of Jesus, there's no doubt, in fact, uh, enlightened people in every religion recognize Jesus as one of the great figures of history, a great teacher. What he said had profound and ever-discoverable truth. Um, and so there you can look at Jesus and his words with a plural words. Uh, what he taught, what he said, taught. Even what he did, taught. But there are passages in the Bible in which he seeks to indicate that his person is actually a more important reality than what he taught. And so he doesn't say, and this is a later Christian scripture, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to God but by me. Okay, that's been the root of Christian exclusivism, but that's not the part of which I want to talk about this morning. What, what he says is, he doesn't say, what I'm teaching you is the way, the truth, and the life. Ordinarily, people would consider teaching or words as true. You could say, it's raining out when it's sunny out, and then those words are not true. You can say, it's raining out when in fact it is, and you've spoken truth. So ordinarily, we're, we're gazing upon words when we want to assess what is true. But Jesus doesn't say, what I'm teaching you is true, and no one can reach God other than by attending to and paying close attention and implementing what I teach. That isn't what he said. He didn't point to his words when he indicated what about him provides access to the divine. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the truth. This is a radical and extreme statement. And it departs from the notion that we can be taught. If his words are true, we can study them, we can seek to implement them, and we can attain our goal, in this case, harmony with the divine infinite and divine love through the application of the teachings. If he is the truth, then the means by which or the path to, through which you will seek to attain or understand the fullness of the divine for yourself is through a relationship with that person to get to know him ever better, ever better, ever better. This is a very strong and stark uh, division point in the religious experience. The reason why is, if it's just words, I retain my own authority I can pick up the book, I can read it, I can claim it, I studied it, I myself implemented it, I became something based on the application of my studies. I have my authority, my independence, and I, I'm not dependent. On the other hand, if I'm confronted by an individual who says, I am the way, that means I'm not independent. I'm dependent on that particular person or my relationship with that person. I am the truth. I can't just go pick up a book or, or watch a bunch of YouTube videos or wander around in the library and pick my favorite guru or favorite author who doesn't cause me any trouble. I'm stuck with that particular guy. I am the way. There's no other way. And so 
what I'm introducing here, which is classically engaged in the Christian religion, is this challenge of the word and substance. Yes, may, may, possibly, or maybe, I think Christians probably believe, every single solitary thing Jesus ever said is true, good enough. But that's not even their point. The point of Christians is that Jesus is the truth, not each and every solitary thing he said. And so this division between word and substance is a classical division which moves to every part of life and moves very importantly into the arena of religious history. Because if you have disciples, a disciple can study the teachings, can apply the teachings more rigorously and more determinedly and more sacrificially and more self, self-negatingly than any other person on earth and can in fact perhaps become most like the original master or the Christ or the teacher or the guru. But what if that master has a son? Then who has a better chance of being in relationship with the, uh, the way and the truth? No matter what I study, no matter how much I become, no matter how perfect I become, even if I become the paragon of anyone who has ever listened to that particular teacher and those particular words and become the most perfect incarnation of those things, and he has a son, am I going to be in a position of having a better understanding or relationship with that master than the son? That's the real question. The question might be yes. Yes, possibly the student has a far better understanding of the master than the son who might be a profligate jerk, who never never did crap in his life, never read a word, never tried to become anything. But does that son inherit a certain, a certain dimension of insight and capacity for relationship with the master that the student of the word, of the teachings, could never have? That's the question. That's the division. And that is, that is where it's a division not only in the history of religion, not only in religions such as Christianity, but every religion, when you get to the bottom of it, no matter how much it claims to be non-theistic or, or just a collection of teachings, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't get like that. There is always a relationship between the word and substance or the word and the person. And in our own life, if we happen to be people who are involved in the pursuit of spiritual attainment, and spiritual self-realization, then this very issue also participates in our experience. The word and substance. I realize here that I've come to a length of time in my speaking that is approximately enough. I can't go on and on and on about this, but I've only just introduced the groundwork for the conversation So this particular topic I'll have to return to and continue speaking about. But for now, if I may, can I leave you with looking at not only religion, but life in the workplace, life in my family relationships, and in my own particular spiritual pursuits. If I happen to be a person that reads the Gita every day or reads inspirational literature every day or the Bible every day, we have to begin to understand that there are dimensions, this divided pair of things, word or teachings and substance or realization that ultimately should, I believe, become integrated into our lives in a synoptic fashion. So on this topic, I've just begun. I thank you very much for listening to these thoughts so far, and I'll be back with you again soon.